Hello. We're using Blender 2.67 on Windows. Here's our splash screen. Thanks for watching. Some preliminaries. You can press pause on your video player. We do expect you now to use keyframes and graphs and 3D view and the video sequencer to a minimal degree. Take a note that we are keyframing around every 30 frames, and that includes our camera, as you've seen. Our lattice also is keyframed every 30 frames and, and uses a cycles modifier. To do so, let's turn on our screencast. So, our lattice you can see has zero influence or full influence and less influence over time the shape um, to our text is selected it's dynamic text 400 it has keyframes set up by the script you see them in the graph editor they're also based on 30 frames with the cycles modifier here's some text that will be animated it's a list of text Again, we go to our Dynamic Text 400. We're stressing the name here because it will be used in the script. Part of the script is in Python text, and which the user actually types into. That may change in the future. So, again, we have custom properties, which the Dyne text, Dyne text, etc. We've animated two of them. The most important one is where this end of the text and that you can see that goes from 0 to 1 meaning 0 to 100 percent it's on the screen the slanted line the increasing line was the index in the string so we can either display a particular string and then a portion of the string you see that um, we're coordinating all these keyframes again the incline line was the index into which string and then the f the final care pause is the end of the string so that's the coordination required and everybody's requires coordination of their keyframes when they're doing their video again um, you have your own artistic taste and so use the script or not I, accordingly to your taste I have my own artistic taste and I'm not trying to convince you of my artistic taste we ran our first part of our script and that sets the callback but th but we need to do two steps so um, we've completed the first step we're also looking and seeing how the scene has properties dynamic text active just the same way a screencast does so that's common practice to put some properties in the scene so we ran our first script again and we see that we're not yet animating the portion of the text but we're going to do that now so we have a text you can see the name of our object that was seen before we ran the script and now let's play the 3d view and you can see that the text is animated now we recorded at two frames per second and playing back at four frames per second so the video is faster than real time so you see choppiness and a lot of uh, speediness We've modified the text with some quick change to the script, and you see the Declaration of Independence to some small degree on the screen. So we're demonstrating you can change your list of strings to be animated. Let's change it back, and we're going to change a small bit of text, as you see on the screen. Coordinate with Dynamic Text 400. It's 
we ran the script. Now we're going to play back the 3D view and again we see our animation of text is working. We show a portion of the text and we select a particular string from the list of strings. Let's set a directory for the output of our render. We're going to render PNGs with transparency and we'll definitely use alpha over alpha over later. Let's start the animation. So we coordinated all our keyframes around the um, concept of every string will occupy 30 frames and we'll remember that later because when we do e video editing if we need to split a sequence we'll split every 30 frames. On the top of the screen you see Dyn Text 0 selected and again you can see it has a cycles modifier and the cycle is on 30 frames. Um, I suggest people use Bezier curves for these types of things. I, I had difficulty when I tried to use anything other than Bezier. I couldn't coordinate my 30 frames very easily. We're also using a node editor. You may have noticed it's being blurred around the edges. Using the node uh, manipulations. We're just about done with our render. One more look at the graph editor, seeing how we animated every 30 frames. Oh, we have a cycles in every 30 frames. Let's go to the video editor. Let's remove some old video and start fresh. We're going to add the image sequence which we created. Select all move it into place and choose alpha over because that was our original design. We'll do a test in the video sequencer and notice we're in a different scene so that we don't have conflicts between the frame ranges. Our frame range right now is 1 to 540 and before it was 1 to 210 but we're in different scenes. Now here's a script. We're going to run the script to cancel. Now that we can find it with the spacebar, EZ is typed in. We, our stride is going to be 30 as we talked about many times today. And we're going to increment the length by 30 and have a gap of 10. So the more strings that are being animated, the more valuable the script would be. So it cuts, extends, and produces gaps. We're running the video sequence. We see text typing effect, then there's a repeat at the end, and then a gap. Those are my artistic tastes today, but they you can have your own artistic taste and use these scripts however you want. We'll repeat this sequence. We um, deleted, we added back the, the image sequence, alpha over, we cut at 30, and we used different length increments and gap just for a change of pace. And then we can test it. Oh, to make it a little bit more compute intensive, let's turn off the dynamic text. You can see that it no longer updates the text. The other modifiers such as the lattice are still working. Now let's now let's play the script in the video sequence editor. We have typing, repetition, and then gap. Again, the more items you have, the more valuable the script would be. Now again, to review, we will modify the text again and we'll run the script.
thanks for tolerating all my pauses in this commentary. We run the script and we play the 3D view. So we see our new text. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Please comment.